everybody. It has been a long time since I've shot a log. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I just wasn't in the mood and then this weekend all of a sudden I was in the mood. So here we are, a log. I have a lot to tell you and a few things to share and some storytelling to do. Um, first up, you'll notice that what's behind me is a little different than what you've seen before on a log. I'm still in the same house. But we did a tiny bit of a renovation to my office this winter. Um, my um, dog spent the last few years of her life in my office with me on the carpet. And I didn't really realize how disgusting the carpet was until after she passed away, like six or eight months later that summer. I was like, it is really smelly in here. So we ripped out that carpet, which involved like taking all my computers and everything out. I don't think I'd moved all that stuff in like 10 years. Ripped the carpet out and we had really nice hardwood installed that's really easy to clean. And part of what moved out of the office was my daughter Bella's old desk that she used to like work at when she was a kid. So I gained this whole weird little alcovey space in my office and I ended up getting a um, 16 cube wall. It's like perfectly square cubes. I think these are 14 by 14 cubes. So I ended up finding this somewhere and it fits perfectly on one wall. And then I've got my bookshelf behind me. And um, what's awesome is in each of these cubes is a different weight of yarn. And I have them kind of organized from lace all the way through Aaron. So I can really easily find yarn. This certainly not all of my yarn stash is in here, but a lot of it is. And what's great is I can be like, oh, I want to see what I have for lace weight yarn. I'm thinking on an idea and I can literally just like pull out all the lace weight yarns that I know that I'd be interested in working with. And they are right there. But they're also like really sealed up in these cubes. You can see on the cube, sorry, I have to figure out which way to move my hand. The only thing that's exposed on the cubes is this little um, hole right here. Otherwise they're like sealed up tight in the bottom. So I feel like the yarn can stay really clean. I did catch one of my cats on the bottom shelf on one of the bottom cubes reaching into the handle to like grab some yarn and pull it out. So I had to put some index cards in those ones on the bottom so he couldn't do that because he's a bad, bad boy and he's not allowed to trash my good yarn. Um, isn't that cute? <laughs> I still am like, he's so cute. He's a yarn trasher. Um, so this is my new wall of yarn. I do have a cube up towards the front that's got kind of all my things that are in progress and I can see that really easily from my desk, which is great. So I can kind of like flash my eye over there and remember what I was thinking about for working with next. I can kind of like visually pull things forward, which has been really helpful for me and then have other things away and clean, which I appreciate because oh, I live in an old house and things get dusty very easily. So um, that's my new space and I am keeping one wall in here totally clean for photography, which I've never had before and is really helpful. Um, and I have plants in here now. There's just a little more room. It's really um, turning into a space I'm really enjoying being in. Um, although being on the computer is not one of my top 10 favorite things to do. I do it a lot every day and it's nice to be in a space that I enjoy while I'm on the computer. Um, I want to jump into a bunch of things I have to tell you about. I, um, I've had a busy winter for winter. I've got some skiing in. Some of you know that I absolutely love Nordic skiing. Um, probably maybe more than I love knitting because it's easier to do knitting almost all the time and skiing has these like very little windows and I was able to snag a few of them this year which I'm really thankful for um, and not have to drive far. I was able to stay local and get my skiing in. Um, I've had some new designs come down the pike in the last few months. I think I just want to talk about two recent ones. Um, one is Presto Calo, which we like to say Presto Calo. Can you guys say that with me? Presto Calo. Um, presto kind of means like ready, right? Or like 
just rapidly. Um, Presto Callo, the reason I named it that, I actually didn't name it, my friend Stephanie did. And it's because I got this yarn from Jill Draper, it's called Ansel, it's 100% merino wool, it's spun in New Hampshire at Harrisville, it's a woolen spun yarn. And I got a skein from her and literally this cowl just like knit itself. I don't think I've ever knit a bigger project that fast. Um, and it designed itself super quickly, there was hardly any ripping, I did like one little watch and was like oh I love this stitch oh that's so fun and you can see the stitch I think that this camera because I'm trying out a new um, style here will be able to focus on that if I hold it steady you can see it alternates with these little beaded sections so the beads are pre-strung on the yarn and they're slipped in front of stitches and then eyelid stitches so you end up with this kind of like ruching effect along the stitch um, and I love the juxtaposition of this yarn and these beads. This yarn is, I think, maybe the wooliest yarn I've ever worked with, with beads. And I found that I could only slide, like I would pre-string about two or 300 beads at a time, but I found that I could only slide three or four inches of beads at a time and not have the yarn want to pull apart and break. So it actually wears really well with the beads on it, but because it's woolen spun, the fibers are not, um, in a worsted spun, the fibers are like more intertwined with each other. And it's a little like tighter of a twist. In a woolen spun, you get this like loftier, airier fibers, but it does mean that they can pull apart a little more easily. So you just have to be careful sliding the beads down the yarn, but the finished project is absolutely scrumptious and soft and wooly. I love how this yarn smells. Um, so Presto Callo, I think I missed this because I'm so excited to finally tell you about it, um, was March's design for Lola's Choice. For those of you who don't know, Lola's Choice is my small, smaller knitted kit club. So um, Lola's Choice kits ship out every other month. And um, sometimes there'll be small projects like a necklace, sometimes there'll be bigger projects like a cowl. I've done little socks before, I've done hats, I've done bracelets. What haven't I done, right? Um, but Presto Cowlo, um, I'll show you what a kit looks like. The kit ended up coming, it has a card in it, and it's got a skein of Jill's yarn. Um, I spent a little more than I was supposed to because this yarn is a little more expensive than my price point for yarn in a kit. Um, but it was so good and I was so excited that Jill Draper was able to work with me on this that I had to do it. So it um, comes with a two ounce skein of Ansel, which again is a U.S. spun, U.S. wool, merino wool. And then it comes with beads with a dental floss threader and I also included a little stitch marker in there because um, the pattern needs a stitch marker at the beginning of the round. And a lollipop, because who doesn't love a lollipop? I've been hearing that um, some people's partners kind of wait by the door and when the Lola's Choice kit comes, <laughs> they're all like, hey, did you get a treat? Can I have it? And then they get the treat and then the person who got the kit gets the kit, so everybody wins in that case. Um, you will see on Ravelry a bunch of people are already knitting into their kits. Some people are already done. Um, I did a decreased bind off video for this. so. Um, a decrease bind off is a really lovely decorative bind off that has like a little bit of stretch to it, but not too much stretch. It's more of a stretch than um, a regular bind off would have, but not as much stretch as like a um, Russian lace bind off. So I was looking for a bind off that was kind of like in between the two bind offs I typically use. And that decrease bind off really fit the bill for this well. Um, what else can I tell you about Ansel? I do have a few kits left, not a ton but um, maybe 10 or 12, I'm not quite sure like what the exact number is. So if you wished you signed up for Lola's Choice and started with Ansel, if you sign up now, you will start with this. If you are someone who knows that your subscription for Lola's Choice is up with March and you're wanting to re-sign up for May, just wait till you get an email from me because that means I've sold out of these and I'm like rolling everything to May signups. I'm knitting on the May pattern right now for Lola's Choice. It's really colorful and soft. It's so soft, it's like knitting with a butterfly's wing. It's really fun. Um, and it's got a great name. And that's all I can say, but it's good, I promise. It's, it's a good spring knit. 
Uh, I really try to like time those knits to what's happening weather wise. The next new design that's released, I'm going to have to like splash up on the screen as I'm talking about it because it is called Pacificus DK and um, I knit a sweater called Pacificus a few years back. It's a fingering weight side to side sweater. It uses my Novus construction, which is a seamless side to side construction. And um, my friend's son who works at Blueprint asked me if I would do a T DK weight version for them. And I was like, that's a great idea because not everybody is up for a fingering weight sweater. It takes a while. I know the people who knit Pacificus and fingering weight, it took them a little while. It creates a great fabric, but it's not a fast knit. Um, so I knit Pacificus DK in um, the Cloudboard Pima cotton yarn. And um, I have my swatch here. I think this was a sleeve that I had originally cast on and it was bigger than I wanted it to be. So I had to take out two repeats. So I've got that to show you. Um, the lace stitch on Pacificus DK is a traditional Shetland lace bead stitch. It's one of my fa favorite Shetland lace stitches. It's a four row repeat. Once you learn the flow of the stitch, it makes sense. It's not the easiest stitch in the world to fix if you run into a problem, but um, the fabric it creates is really lovely. And um, I love this yarn for a cotton DK weight yarn. Sometimes you need a DK weight yarn that is 100% cotton and it wears really well. I'm really impressed with it. Um, so check that out. I'll give you guys a link to the pattern to look at it more. It does have like this little vented side seam that um, is really nice, you know, because our hips are not the same size as our bust and it gives a little more flexibility at that point in the body. It's sized up to a 60 inch bust. So it, um, I try to do the full size range for that pattern and I'm excited to see what you think. And I have something exciting to go along with that that's at the end of this log. So you gotta watch all the way through and then I'll tell you about that. The next thing I want to tell you about is kind of an interesting one. A few weeks back, I think it was the beginning of February, I posted that I was knitting a sweater. I think this is exactly what was in the, maybe there were more stitches on the needle at that point when I posted that I was casting on a sweater in Anzula Breeze for spring. And in my mind, I was going to have it done when I went to Blueprint at the end of February to wear on set. And I just ended up not having any time to knit on it and realizing that the sweater I had designed, one, was not very innovative. It was like a mashup of a lace stitch I had used in um, a pattern of mine called Crucero, and it was worked from the bottom up, and it had like lace on the bottom, and then it had a little v-neck, and it just wasn't, it was like I'd seen it before, and then I realized it looked incredibly like Kitty, which I did last year, which had lace on the bottom and solid on the top. And I just totally lost my mojo, like completely lost it. So um, I set it aside. This is as far as I got. I might end up using this for something else. I almost think if I held two strands of this together, I could get a fabric to do a Pacificus DK for myself, which would be great because it turns out that, you know, I, I knit the Pacific SDK and I send it off to Blueprint and I don't get those samples back. I mean, I might in five years, but it would be nice to have one of those sweaters for myself. I would enjoy that. Um, I think I see Buffy in the other room, maybe trying to go to the bathroom somewhere that she shouldn't. So I'm gonna pause for a second and go take care of that and then come back and tell you some more, okay? So the next thing I want to tell you about is a decision we have to make together and I'm going to put this here and then I'll also put a questionnaire in Ravelry and like a special thread just for the questionnaire and I'll let you guys comment and say your thoughts on it and I'll make a decision by the end by like the last week in March so I can start to get everything together. And I was going to do a knit along for Hug You Me, which I'm wearing. And I'm going to like kind of stand up so you can see it and turn around. I'll, I'll link to it in um, Ravelry. I have worn this sweater all winter long. It's actually looking kind of worn. 
Um, sometimes I fold up the sleeves when I'm doing dishes. Sometimes I have them down. It's become just like my warm, yummy winter sweater. What's interesting about it, because it's got these big sleeves, right? This is it's a great transitional sweater. So it's a great sweater for like spring going into summer and fall going into winter. And then it's a great house sweater, but it does not fit under any of my coats. So when I'm going somewhere and I want to wear it, I have to like put it in a bag and put on my coat and then get where I'm going and then put on my sweater, which is a little, doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel like authentic fashion, right? To like change into what you're wearing once you get somewhere. <laughs> so I don't, I end up wearing it at home in the winter and then it's kind of my layering piece in, um, it definitely was this fall and I know it's going to be the spring. Um, so we were going to start a like structured knit along for Hug You Me in April after we were done with the first quarter Cal in my Ravelry group, um, which by the way, there's a little more time in and it's going awesome. Um, we were going to start a knit along for this in April to not have too many knit alongs happening at the same time. A lot of people have already knit this or are deep into it. So when I do a structured knit along, I shoot videos for the knit along. I have goals like get to this point on this day and this point to this day. And then every week I'll like, um, not really point by this day, point by this day, but like get to this point by next week when I release the next section that you should be working on. And I release videos for that, like any techniques you need, any sizing issues, any tips to help you have knitting success. And then people ask questions in that thread for that section of what they're working on. It kind of breaks it down into pieces. And certainly Hug You Me is a great pattern to do a knit along like that with. So we could do that with Huggy Me, and that was the plan, or we could do it with Pacificus DK if people want to have a summer for a sweater for like spring and summer. So I am game for either one. I haven't started shooting the videos and I could do it for either one or the other, but I need you guys to choose because you're the ones that will be knitting it, right? Um, so I'll put up a questionnaire. I'll, I'll put a link here so you know where to go answer that questionnaire. I'll put it up in my Ravelry group and I'll give you a deadline that I need your, your desires by. And basically, whichever one has more votes, that is what I will do in April. Um, and I'm excited about either one. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's more like, what are you up for? And that's what we'll do together. Does that make sense? Um, next up, typically when I do a log, I talk about like what I'm sewing and what I'm making and what I'm obsessed with. And I've been a tiny bit obsessed with the news, but I'm trying not to be a crazy person. I'm sure you can all agree <laughs> and understand what I'm talking about. There's a lot going on right now. Um, sewing wise, I didn't sew as much this winter as I typically would in a winter. I skied, which was awesome. Behind me, you can see that I'm still not done with my punch needle, but I'm actually just in the background of the white area right here. So I feel like I could get that done really soon, and I don't actually have any super easy knitting to do right now, so that's what I could be picking up when I'm chatting with people. Um, I could get that done and then figure out how to make the cushion cover for the ottoman, which is my ultimate goal of what that is going to be. So I've been working on that. I did sew some clothing because I shot, this is my way of being like, I shot a new class with Blueprint. I um, just came back from Denver where I shot a new class with Blueprint at the end of February. It should be out end of March, April, like things are always a little vague, but somewhere in the March, April timeframe, it'll be out. And um, I like to sew new clothing for new designs and that class has new designs. And so I did sew a few things for it and that was fun, but they were all quick sews because I had like a weekend to get them done. I didn't have a ton of time to work on them, but um, it got me a little inspired for some spring summer sewing. Um, I do not think a girl can have too many summer dresses and skirts, um, at least I can't. So, um, I'll be working on some of those. I also seem to have a little winter um, um, poundage on me 
and so I, there's a few things that might not fit the way they used to when I get back to them in the spring. So I might have to replace a few things in my wardrobe for a little while. Um, see my eyes go big there. Um, food wise, interestingly related to that poundage issue, um, Last summer, I learned how to bake sourdough bread, and I had been baking a ton all winter long. I took an amazing class in December with a local sourdough bakery, got deep into sourdough, and then a week ago, I decided to take a break from, like, wheat and dairy and wine. Wah! <laughs> Partially because I've been just feeling... Um, really kind of sluggish and bloated and I wanted to see if I did like a, you know, more vegetables, less carbs, if that would kind of boost me up a little bit. And it's actually, once I got over the headache from like detoxing from all of that stuff that I was so used to being in my diet, I um, feel great and I'm sleeping super well. And that's a bummer because I really love all three of those things. Um, and this might just be a little bit of a like, you know, every so often, take a break, let your body reset. And um, But I'm going to keep with it for a little while. So that means I am not baking. And what I haven't been doing yet is like looking for substitute foods, like making gluten-free brownies with like dairy-free, gluten-free brownies. I'm just not doing that. I'm kind of, you know, eating... Um, a corn cake with the deviled egg smashed on top, which is really good. And I don't think I'll tire of that anytime soon. I made really good walnuts um, over the weekend with honey and cinnamon. It was just like walnuts, honey, and cinnamon, and you bake that in the oven. And they seem to like satisfy my sweet craving. Um, I couldn't quite bring myself to do the like no sugar, no soy, no carb whole, you know, whole 30. I'm not that tough. So there's a little dietary aside for you. Have you guys ever done any kind of like diet plan things? I know there's like keto and paleo and whole 30 and whatever it is I'm doing right now is of my own creation. And I just know it feels good. So I'm going to go with that until I really miss a piece of homemade sourdough toast <laughs> and I'll listen to that craving when it comes back, I promise. Um, so that is my sewing, baking. I did, when I was in Denver, buy a fair amount of fabric at Fancy Tiger Craft. So um, I bought some swimsuit material and a swimsuit pattern. Um, and the material that I bought isn't quite the right material, but I think it'll be good for playing with. Or I might actually use that for a pair of like biking shorts, because it would be really good material for biking shorts. And then um, find another material for the swimsuit. Um, Liberty of London, do you guys know Liberty of London? They designed the absolutely most gorgeous swimsuit material, and it is not inexpensive but I've got my eye on that. Um, I feel like you would need to do like go to Joann's or somewhere and just buy really inexpensive bathing suit fabric to like try out the pattern before cutting into the Liberty of London because that stuff is dear. Um, what else do I have to tell you? I'm rambling. Nothing like it. Uh, let's see. I think... That's all I have to tell you, and I didn't really ask you if you had any questions for me. I um, I do have a question for you, and it is multi-pronged, and there's a giveaway involved in it. So this is kind of the end of the log. So you've watched this far. This is how you could help me out a little bit and I can help you out. And um, what I do for the log is you can always leave comments here on YouTube or I always set up a thread over on in my Ravelry group for the log. So um, what I would love for you to do is go to Ravelry and favorite Pacificus DK. Go check that out. Go look at Hug You Me, get an idea of what they both look like if you're gonna vote for one or the other. Favorite Pacificus DK, DK when you're there. Then go look at all the colors that Blueprint has to offer for Pacificus DK kits 
and choose which color you love. Um, then go to the thread. This is like, you have to do this and then you have to do that and then you have to do this. Then go to the thread in my Ravelry group for this log and let me know what color you love and also what you'd love to see me talk about in a future log. That's just so I have like some discussion points and talking points going forward. I really want to do more of these. Um, so you have to go favorite Pacificus DK, vote if you want to do the knit along, choose a color that you love for Pacificus DK from Blueprint, and I'll make sure you have the link for that. And then go leave a comment telling me what color you love and what you would love for me to talk about in a future log. Um, and one of you who leaves a comment there, you can only, only one comment per person, okay? And I can touch my face because I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a total aside. Um, one of you is going to win a sweater quantity of the Cloudborn Fibers Pima Cotton DK, and then I'll gift you the pattern for Pacificus DK if you don't already have it. So um, that's a giveaway for you, a sweater quantity of yarn to knit a sweater, which is pretty awesome. We will gift you the largest size, so you don't have to tell me what size you want to make. We're just going to gift the largest size, and if you make a smaller size, you'll have some extra skeins to knit up some like baby items or washcloths or whatever you want. Um, and the only thing about the giveaway is we'll only be able to give a color that's in stock. So if you choose a color that's in stock by the time the giveaway is over, then um, you um, then you'll have I'll get in touch with you and you can choose another color. I'll put notes about when the giveaway is over over in that um, over in that log post on Ravelry and then here as well. I have to look at a calendar and decide what makes sense for that. Wow, that was a lot. Um, tell me what you want to hear in future logs because I have a feeling that we all might be spending more time at home in the next upcoming weeks, maybe month. I'm hoping it's fast. The better we are, the quicker it's gonna be. And doing logs is a way that we all could hang out together. Um, we can try and slip some lives in there too. Lives are hectic for me and fun for you, I know. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Happy knitting. <laughs>